bringing forth the sword and board philosophy, the shield and sword style. This build prioritizes the ability to have options, being able to both dodge efficiently and block effectively. Combined with the safe and quick attacks of a straight sword, you will be able to take your time studying your opponent and punishing all of their mistakes. Not only that, but you will look damn good while doing it. This is Nobility, a build that focuses on the boss weapon Blue Blood Sword, taking advantage of that unique characteristic that all humans have, luck. If you're looking for a build that caters to those that play carefully and like to understand before they act, then welcome, for you are right at home. As always, we will review the stats of this build, the equipment that we use, and of course, its applications in both PvE and PvP. Since there is a lot of ground to cover, I have created timestamps in the description of this video in order to make it easier to navigate the content and give you the opportunity to skip straight to the part that interests you the most. Let's get started. The objective of this build is to maximize the power and efficiency of the Blue Blood Sword. In my opinion, it is one of the best straight swords in the game, boasting good power, great reach, and the ability to be buffed with items and spells, while maintaining the speed and safety of the straight sword moveset. You will find an extremely reliable and trustworthy weapon. Furthermore, this build performs exceptionally well in PvP. To reach this objective, we will be running the following stats. Start the game as Royalty. This class is the most efficient to reach the required stat block, allowing us to make use of every soul level possible. I created this build to be efficient in both PvE and PvP, so we're sticking to soul level 120. Finally, this is the stats block that you want to end up with. 40 Vitality 14 Intelligence 40 Endurance 18 Strength 18 Dexterity 30 Magic 18 Faith and 22 luck. To reach this point, I recommend that you take the following path. Your first priority should be to get your vitality and endurance to 20. These are the stats that will allow you to take more hits and attack more times, while maintaining good mobility. When starting out a build, being able to live is more important than dealing maximum damage, so we focus on this. Your damage should be good enough at the beginning of the game to take on the first few bosses until we get to this point. Remember to upgrade your weapon in order to keep your damage up. Your second priority is to get intelligence to 14 and faith to 18. We need this in order to be able to cast the two spells that this build requires, light weapon and second chance. The third priority is to get strength, dexterity and magic to 18. Alongside Faith, we need all of these stats in order to be able to wield the Blue Blood Sword. The fourth priority is to get Vitality and Endurance to 40. As we progress further into the game, we will need the additional health and stamina for survivability, especially if you go into New Game Plus. The fifth priority is to get Luck to 22. This is the main scaling stat for the Blue Blood Sword, and it will greatly increase its damage. Finally, we will finish the build by taking magic to 30, making light weapon a serious buff. So, why do we use these stats? Let me explain. Vitality at 40 because it gives us the minimum amount of health that I feel comfortable with, especially in New Game Plus and beyond. In human form, we have 1325 HP. In soul form, we have 662 HP. And... In soul form, with the Kling Ring, we have 927 HP. If we were to go any lower, I believe that our health could turn into a liability. Intelligence at 14, because it is the minimum amount that we need to have two spell slots. This way, we can use Light Weapon, and combined with the Silver Coronet, we can reach 100 MP to be able to cast Second Chance. Endurance at 40, because we want the most stamina possible for mobility, weapon swings, and blocking. Strength and Dexterity both at 18, because it is the minimum amount that we need in order to wield the Blue Blood Sword, our main weapon. 
Magicka 30 because we want the light weapon buff to be as strong as we can make it. Not only that, but magic also helps slightly with the damage scaling of the blue blood sword. Faith at 18 because it is a requirement to wield our main weapon and because we need the miracle slots to be able to use second chance. And finally, luck at 22 because it is the main scaling stat for the blue blood sword. Moving on to the equipment, we are using and we will always use the blue blood sword. Our build is catered to drawing out the most power that we can from this weapon. With this combination of stats, 18 strength, 18 dexterity, 30 magic, 18 faith and 22 luck, the blue blood sword is able to reach a total AR of 322. This is good for a straight sword with quick attacks, but it's important to understand that it is split damage. It will always be less efficient than pure damage. The blue blood sword can be buffed with items and spells, and this is one of its most powerful features. Once you use light weapon on this sword, its power is unleashed. Reaching an incredible 565 AR while buffed, this sword will make quick work of most bosses thanks to its quick attacks that cost very little stamina. That said, its greatest strength is also its greatest weakness. We cannot keep the sword buffed at all times, and this means that its damage becomes situational. In the offhand, we are running the Dark Silver Shield. This is, in my opinion, the best shield in the game. It provides 100% physical reduction, 100% magical reduction, and good enough stability to block a few hits. It also has the ability to parry. For its weight, you will not find a more efficient shield especially for PvP, where magic spells are very dangerous. In regards to Catalyst, this build uses both a Talisman of Gods and the Insanity Catalyst. The Talisman will go on the right hand, and the Catalyst will go on the left. It is important to understand the order of operations when it comes to casting spells. This build has a total of 116 MP. Remember that using the Insanity Catalyst cuts our MP in half, down to 58 MP. For this reason, always cast Second Chance before switching to the Insanity Catalyst to cast Light Weapon. Otherwise, you will be using a lot more spices than needed. Next up, the Rings. These are a very important part of the build. I personally prefer to use the Ring of Great Strength and the Fragrant Ring. I choose these two because I want to wear heavy armor for fashion, and so I need the extra equip load, and because I want the MP regeneration to be able to cast more light weapon while saving spices. That being said, these are not the only choices. If you wear lighter armor, you open up a slot for the Kling Ring, the Regenerator's Ring, or the Eternal Warrior's Ring. The same goes for the Fragrant Ring. If you do not want the MP regeneration, then you can consider running defensive rings like the Ring of Flame Resistance or the Ring of Magical Doldness, depending on which enemy you're taking on. Try different options and stick with whatever is most comfortable to you. As for spells, we're using two, Light Weapon and Second Chance. Light Weapon is our sorcery and it provides an incredible boost of power to our weapon, even if temporary and Second Chance is, quite frankly, the best miracle in the game. It is very hard to justify not running it in every build. It is really game-changing. Being able to not only avoid death, but instantly recover half of your health is too good to pass up. One of the least attractive things regarding this build is its reliance on items. Besides healing items, there are two that this build needs a lot of, Spices and Sticky White Slime. Due to a relatively low MP pool and the high cost of the spells that we use, spices are going to be one of our most consumed items. MP regeneration is nice, but sometimes we do not have time to wait. On the other hand, Sticky White Slime provides a good buff of magic damage to our weapon. While it is not as strong as light weapon, it is definitely easier to maintain. Since it is a consumable item that we can buy, we are able to stock up on a large amount of them and continue to apply it to our weapon throughout the level. 
This allows us to increase our damage while saving light weapon for bosses or particularly hard enemies. Make sure you have plenty of both. Finally, the armor. I chose to go with the dark silver set combined with the silver coronet purely because of fashion. I really like the way this set looks in combination with the blue blood sword and it also provides me with that noble knight look that I was looking for. That being said, the only piece of armor that is required is a silver coronet. Every other piece can be whatever you want, so have fun and find the look that suits you the best. When it comes to the dangers of the world of Voletaria, a sword and board playstyle is always very effective. Besides Bloodborne, patience and blocking have always been very efficient when it comes to going through the challenges of the Souls games. Demon Souls is no different. In fact, shields are very powerful in this game. For this reason, if you're planning on using this build for PvE, you will not have any issues with it. It gives you the options you need and really favors a smart, patient player that takes their time with the game. The biggest advantage that this build offers for PvE is definitely the weapon. The Blue Blood Sword is a straight sword and its moveset is very good. Quick horizontal slashes allow you to maintain space between you and multiple targets, while keeping your stamina at a good level to allow you to dodge and retreat when needed. At the same time, the thrusting R2 is one of my favorite moves, offering amazing reach and good damage, in order to zone out your enemies and allowing you to punish their missed attacks. No matter what archstone you are in, or what terrain you are fighting at, whether it's an open battlefield or a tight corridor, this weapon will offer you an answer. It is this versatility combined with the burst power of the light weapon buff that will allow you to overcome any challenge that the game presents. That being said, the further you go into PvE, the weaker this build becomes. The Blue Blood Sword split damage really suffers when you start hitting New Game Plus and beyond. As enemies gain better defenses, you will notice that your damage truly falls off. This makes the build even more reliant on the light weapon buff, and as a result, makes its efficiency much more situational. If you're planning on taking on the later game cycles like New Game Plus 5, I would not recommend this build. That said, I found that it performs very well up to New Game Plus 2. This build offers the player a lot of reliable options, but we cannot ignore the drop in damage. In regards to co-op, I really like this build. The issues that it has with damage are not as big of a factor in jolly cooperation. With the damage bonuses that we get from white character tendency and the allies ring, we are able to provide useful support to any host. Light weapon will continue to provide the burst damage that we need for bosses, and the defensive capabilities of the playstyle can generate openings for your host, both to attack and to retreat. Personally, this build would not be my build of choice if my intention is to run PvE. But it's not a bad option, it's just not the best. When it comes to PvP, I think that this is one of the best builds that you can use. In my opinion, straight swords are very good in PvP due to their moveset and their safe options. Combined with the power that we get from Light Weapon, we can get some very intimidating damage without needing to take excessive risks. Since the health pools in PvP are based on the different builds that people run, the values we are able to obtain go much further against human opponents than they would against the max New Game Plus enemy, for example. That being said, the build still relies on the light weapon buff. If an opponent is able to outlast the duration of the spell, our damage will drop severely and we will lose our most intimidating factor. This is something that we need to take into consideration. While I do believe that this is one of the best builds that you can use for PvP, it does not mean that it is an easy build to use. It also does not mean that it will get you wins for free. This build is very, very, very much player skill dependent. If you spend all of your time turtling behind the shield, you will get guard broken or dead angled. If you become careless spamming R1s, you will get parried. 
If you become over-aggressive because light weapon is about to wear off, you will be punished. The fact that this build performs very well in PvP does not mean that it requires no effort. As a player, we need to understand the different matchups and appreciate our opportunities to deal damage. It is very different playing against a magic user than it is to play an opponent that's using the Dragon Bone Smasher. Knowledge and experience are very important. With this build, the more time you invest into learning, the better you will perform. In all honesty, and personally speaking, I am not a fan of the Blue Blood Sword. While I acknowledge that it is a very good weapon, it requires a very specific build. I believe that we can obtain similar results with other builds that offer better alternatives. A Crushing Knight Sword in a Strength build provides us with a very similar damage number and the exact same moveset. The Penetrating Sword is also a very special weapon that shines in PvP. I believe that these are two alternatives that provide us the same result but with additional options. That being said, I did have a lot of fun with this build, both making it and playing it. And this is the most important part. The build provides a good option that is entertaining to use. In PvE, it may not be the best, but it is fun. In PvP, I do think it is one of the best, but it requires high player skill. Taking into consideration that the weapon deals split damage, I believe that there are better options in the game. Nevertheless, the build performs well, and it is well worth the time invested in it. I would recommend anyone to give it a try. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope I get to see you on the next one.